Hey guys, uh, welcome back to Total Tactics Football. Today, today we got some uh, pretty shocking news in the sense that Danny Ings has just signed for Aston Villa. And, and of course, we will expect that Grealish will move to Man City uh, in an opposite direction, right? So I think um, the structure of this video will be based on Grealish leaving the team and, and what we envision Aston Villa to be playing with and, and why that means Danny Ings could be a fantastic pick for FPL, even on game week one. I think some people have some worries about uh, how fit he is. And I think... Uh, yes, of course, while injury is a concern over the course of the whole season, I think he's played two games for Southampton in preseason and probably hasn't participated in recent games simply due to the fact that I think he was trying to tie down uh, this transfer with Aston, with Aston Villa. And just to kind of imagine what Aston Villa will play like, uh, I've, I've created an illustration of a sort of 4-3-3, 4-2-3-1 uh, kind of tactical hybrid shape that I think Aston Villa will play in. This will be very similar to what they played in with last season when they had Ross Barkley as a 10. Uh, I imagine when Dia will slot in there, and then you kind of have the new uh, wingers in Bailey on the on the right-hand side, and then probably Watkins on the left. And the reason why I'm saying this and, and why I'm expecting Aston Villa to play in this way is because, you know, I think it kind of benefits all, all the players, and, and it also means that they kind of maintain their tactical shape. I don't think Aston Villa were necessarily a great side uh playing out of the back you know with a 4-4-2 they sometimes did do that uh when they had to chase after specific games but i think that the preferred tactical structure for dean smith is to go for this 4-2-3-1 so when we kind of envision ings in the team he will benefit as well um from the chance creation coming in from players like you know buendia uh, the work rate of watkins on the left and then also having um Bailey on the right, who of course is a little bit of an unknown quantity in terms of what he can provide to the Premier League, but we still know that on the bench we have Bertrand Traore as an example, and he will be a very effective player. I think that's the key difference between Ings and Southampton and then Ings and Aston Villa. Uh, you, so once again, when we look back at penalties last season, Watkins didn't get to take many penalties, and still his statistics were fantastic in terms of a kind of efficiency standpoint on, on price, and I imagine Ings would kind of shoot up on this list. Right now he's kind of sitting mid-table, and I put a lot of options as a void for now, because simply I think you don't really want to be touching players like Iheanacho and Watkins, you don't know exactly what positions they're playing or whether they're nailed on. Uh, I think Watkins is probably likely to be nailed on, but probably playing either on the left or as a second striker, uh, which will probably diminish you know his value as a 7.5 player. And then Iheanacho is now dealing with stiff competition in terms of having Vardy, uh, Daka, but also the potential that Leicester could revert to a one-striker formation. Uh, which is very highly probable with uh, Barnes coming back into play. Uh, I think also the fixtures also calls for the fact that you might want to actually tinker with Ings early on in the season. Uh, for me, what what is great about Ings as a player is that he's, um, you know, he, he passes the eye test in the sense that when you watch him play, he does look like a player who will consistently outscore his XG. And for me, the comparison, as I mentioned, between Southampton and Aston Villa is now he will get much more chances, in my opinion, built up for him. And now he can actually take those chances and probably convert them, especially early on in the season uh, when he's playing versus some weaker teams, in my opinion. So it's a good chance for me, I think, to actually go into Ings. The alternative, of course, is actually simply to go for someone a little bit more safe uh, in terms of Antonio or kind of sticking with uh, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, because now I think it puts Watkins in doubt. And at 7.5, you might actually be looking at someone like Wilson as well. Uh, who probably was less less kind of considered, I think, before um, this news came about. But I've gone ahead and actually tried to make, you know, several kind of Danny Ings-based drafts. And for me, as I said, uh, Ings is going to be a little bit more costly than Watkins, and so you'll have to kind of budget around uh, the team a little bit. You know, that 0 0.5 has to come in somewhere. And for the first draft that we have in terms of an Ings-based draft, um, is going to have a 3-5-2 structure. And the reason why I don't have Antonio is simply because I, I do think Calvert-Lewin has fantastic fixtures. And now there are almost three kind of 8.0 forwards that I really like. You know, the pivot to Bamford is there, and I still expect one of Calvert-Lewin or Ings to do extremely well. And I've, I've given a little bit of security by having uh, a West Ham attacker still in the team. That being Bowen, who was one of the great uh, preseason performers as well. Uh, but also someone who I think will have a better season in, than the prior year. You can also kind of look at players like Ben Rama as well, who's, who've done fantastic if you want to kind of price down from West Ham. And I think the contrasting thing is when you look at Everton and, and perhaps even Southampton, the options uh, 
in the midfield aren't as strong. So I think it, it it's kind of nice to have a bit of a premium there in those positions. Um, sorry, not Southampton, but uh, Aston Villa, for example, now with uh, Ings coming in. And I think now there's an opportunity as well to kind of go for like Obafemi as, as, as a value building striker, you know, at a 4.5 option. He now probably will have a lot of game time. Southampton do like to stay within the 4-4-2 shape and undoubtedly he'll get some game time. Uh, the rest of the team is very template in the sense that I've gone for Sanchez, Shaw, Alexander-Arnold, Digne, Rafinha, Salah, and Buendia, and, and even Fernandez. We all know, you know, these are kind of template uh, players, but I think, you know, there's nothing really wrong with going template because I think these are all solid players and we've picked them with a little bit of logic in behind in the sense that most of the, these teams have beneficial fixtures with, I think, the exception to potentially leads. And, you know, simply put, uh, I think Buendia will probably also benefit from getting to play with a more clinical striker, in my opinion. Um, on top of that, I think I've, I've created a second draft. So the second draft will uh, incorporate a little bit of a, a different kind of tactical structure. It's more of a 3-4-3, three, three, which I think fits in with uh, a lot of people's kind of default formations this year with Tony coming into the side. You know, one of the traps of Tony is if he doesn't really perform, he will kind of struggle in your team and you will maybe struggle to kind of move around that 6.5 budget territory for forwards. There's, there's going to be players uh, at you know, a 6.0 price and also perhaps um, a straight pivot to someone like Rodrigo from Leeds. But that is one of the traps of Tony. But I still think he, he will do very well, especially in those kind of early fixtures uh, when he's playing versus some weaker teams uh, with the exception to Arsenal. The reason why I've kept a mostly template team here uh, in terms of keeping Chambers, Digne, uh, Trent, Shaw, Sanchez, etc. Is, is simply because I, I do have a lot of faith in these players and their ability to perform. I think another defender or two other defenders I think can do extremely well would be Sufal and Dunk, but I, I've, I've avoided them for now because I still think there's great value in these 6.5 midfielders. The 5.0 pick here is, is once again, as I say, um, it comes about because I've decided to move down from that someone like Mesley and go for Sanchez. And I think Tella, conversely, is someone who probably will benefit uh, he's had a very good preseason so far, and I think, once again, with Ings leaving the team, Teller could have a much more prominent role in the team. Um, I think he's a, he's a player to watch, and at 5.0 could be a great value riser. So kind of keeping with the theme of, of picking a Southampton player with uh, more potential to kind of play and kind of build their value with Ings leaving. Uh, but that's it for now. So these, these are the two kind of drafts. I mean, obviously, if you don't like having Teller, by the way, you can also go for Mesley and, and a 4.5 like Brownhill. Uh, but right now, these are the kind of drafts I have. I do think Ings will probably actually find his way into my Game Week 1 squad. Uh, the only concern is whether he kind of plays Game Week 1, but I, I, I do uh, tend to think that that will happen. I think Dean Smith has been quite happy to actually insert players uh, as soon as possible. I think Bertrand Shore started last season, but was signed uh, and, and managed to start the season as well. So... Uh, I do think this is a, a transfer that does affect uh, the the PL, uh, the FPL kind of aspect very much because Ings is a fantastic player, but we know he is playing in a in a bit more of a weakened side, whereas Southampton is, uh, so whereas Aston Villa now um, is a side that seems to be continuing to build on their progress. But the one kind of drawback, of course, is you know with too many new players, uh, can they find you know the the right chemistry uh, from the go, and that that might be the one drawback from from actually picking Ings right now. Uh, but let me let me know what you guys think about getting Ings into your team. Uh, I think he's a fantastic player, and I think he will be uh, a core striker and a template striker this year. But, you know, we still have to kind of wait for the season to play out. Injury concerns will probably mean that you'll transfer him in and out eventually. But uh, I think it is safe and it's healthy to start with Ings.